Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Arise News. Let's talk fixed income and money markets in Nigeria. Are investors facing an investment environment with, I guess, few options to put their money? Take a look. The last primary market treasury bill auction, uh, $283 billion offered on the 364-day bill, a gargantuan $1.5 trillion naira in subscriptions. Uh, that, of course, measuring the demand for that particular uh, paper. And we're seeing subscriptions pretty much oversubscribed for all the other papers at 91 day and 182. Also, what are the seven uh, investment options that uh, Nigerians can utilize to manage currency volatility and inflation? I'm going to get that down here. Financial Education Outfit Money Africa has those seven options up there. We're going to see how uh, realistic they are, how practical with uh, Oladipo Ajayi, who is the head of uh, fixed income at Chapel Hill Denim. Good morning, sir. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is nice to be around. Great to have you. I, I want to start with the, uh, the T-bill auction that we, we saw on the 23rd and that massive subscription for the 364-day bill. What, what's the takeaway from, from that when you have subscription levels that high? So, so a great extent, what it means that um, there are a lot of people that have money to actually invest. Um, but uh, what determines whether they want to put out their fund is the level of return that actually accrues um, from, from the investment. And um, since I was speaking, a lot of people were surprised because uh, when you look at this, uh, that la la last auction, uh, there was not much liquidity in the system. So mm -hmm. nobody was expecting to see that huge subscription coming out of the market. And it also tells you that another view for me is the fact that um, it could also be on the back of the central bank uh, acting governor statement that um, uh, the speculators will be punished anytime soon. Mm. So you start seeing people disemphasizing, uh, putting or speculating on there, uh, rather than look for um, a, a risk-free investment where they can actually put their funds and get maybe a reasonable return. And I think uh, that could also be one of the reasons why we saw that huge uh, subscription and that auction. All right. Um, I, I got, of course, I subscribe to the Chapel Hill Denim newsletter where you folks look at the fixed income space equities. I want to ask you about the uh, the OPR, the overnight policy rate and overnight rate. I think two point five and three percent. Um, there was a, a um, commentary in your report talking about liquidity levels in, in the in the money market space. Is that impacting what we're seeing here as far as? Uh, the rates for these for these particular indices. Yeah, what it happens the rates in that window it's the level of liquidity in the system. Uh, if you look at last week, um, rates were not of twenty five percent in that window, and because there was debt of liquidity in the market last week, and but immediately we start seeing uh, inflows from fact payments and also uh, maturity, homo homo maturity, and uh, that also cushioned the effect of level of liquidity in the system. As of last, uh, as of yesterday, we have uh, like about six hundred forty billion wow. in the system, and that's one of the reasons why we saw uh, that huge drop. Uh, on Monday, you will notice that the drop, uh, the rate dropped over 2,000 basis points mm. uh, last Monday, uh, just because um, liquidity actually hit the system on Monday. We had about 220 billion hit the system on Monday, and that's one of the reasons why we saw that huge uh, drop in, uh, in, in rate. So that market is determined by the level of rate liquidity in the system. Okay, how, how do you drain that out? Is there, is there any reason to think that that can be drained out within the next for the next week and what instruments can be used to do that? So as we speak now, currently, um, you see, uh, despite the level of liquidity in the system, you'll notice that there's not much activity on the bond, on the fixed income side. And one of the reasons is that um, when you start, you have to also uh, learn the body language of the monetary policy guys. Uh, if you notice at the last auction, uh, last MPC meeting, they mentioned that uh, they want to increase um, return on investment to people and uh, so as to actually deter people from speculating on Naira. And at the same time, uh, they also want to use that to curtail inflationary pressure. So what else that tells you is that uh, you may likely start seeing them coming out frequently to actually mob the liquidity. And one of the ways to mob liquidity is the sale of FX, um, just like what we normally see. And of course, the CBN was in the, in the, um, in the eye in window yesterday to actually intervene in that market, and they actually sold FX. Uh, that's one of the ways to actually mop uh, Naira liquidity from the system. Another way is the OMO auction, and uh, we saw that actually coming up. Uh, um, that one came back after a long time, about two weeks ago, yeah. uh, where, where the uh, central bank actually uh, floated the uh, OMO auction, uh, where they closed um, about 362-day paper at 14 points, uh, 4911. So it tells you it's another way to actually mop the liquidity from the system. And uh, that's one of the reasons why market is actually very calm now. Mm. That's why the level of liquidity in the system, because you are not so sure how aggressive 
um, this monetary policy guy, and central bank will be about actually mopping the liquidity in the system. Okay, thanks for that. Now, on the <clears throat> T-bills, again, from your, your reports, average uh, about six points, I think 6.4. So how does one justify um, at least this average benchmark yield for T-bills at 6.73, excuse me? How do you bench justify interest in that when you've got inflation in, in double digits with reference to the real rate of return? So um, if you look at um, the risk-free market, um, there's hardly any instrument that can actually beat the current inflation figure. Yeah. Uh, all investment currently in that window is basically uh, at negative real return. And, um, but one thing is that when you look at the average yield, it's not telling you what it tells you is about the average over the horizon on or that the curve. curve. Okay. And uh, so what basically that means is that uh, the short end can be trading 3%, but the long end can be trading 12%. So investor can now look at uh, across the curve to see which one actually suits my investment option. Imagine someone that actually has fund, but you only had fund available just for four months. So what you'll be looking at, you'll be looking at for like uh, a four month bills that will suit your, your need and that, that might not be as attractive as having the opportunity to invest for like a year. Mm. So, and that's one of the reasons why you, you see that um, the, the weighted average uh, of the cough is about six points um, compared to where we're currently trading on, on, on the long end. As we speak on the long end, on, uh, long end of the TB cough, uh, we are still around 11, 11.7 thereabouts. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So, see, this is why we have you on the show to break these things down for And these are solid investment strategies for folks that are watching. So, what about the same question now for bonds, FGM bonds, the average I had on your report about 14.2. This, of course, I guess, I guess, same explanation from you on the short end to the long end. This is the average. Um, What's the investment strategy for FGM bonds? Do you do you hold or you know what what break it down for us? How do you so currently? If you look at um, uh, um, for bond now, and um, uh, my view is now premised on um, the latest uh, statement from the Minister of Finance, uh, which actually stated that um, the federal government is not uh, looking to be aggressive in borrowing. And uh, when you also look at the fact that uh, subsidy has been removed, and we also hear statements from um, the the people in government that we've been able to save a huge amount within that period, so it tells us that we may not be, and uh, we may not need to borrow as much as what we have actually stated in the budget at the beginning of the year. And also knowing fully well that the translation uh, rate has moved from about 470 to about 740 thereabout. It means that we have more Naira now, so you may not need to. And from the budget, we are supposed to borrow like about 7 trillion, not a 7 trillion locally in the market. And we've done about 4.5 trillion thereabout up to date. And when you also now look at there are also windows where cash can come in. So it means that uh, it could be right by saying that we may not need to aggressively come into the market and borrow. And uh, if the center, the DMO now actually uh, uh, follow the talk in the next auction, maybe by not uh, borrowing as much as market would have reacted, you expect you to actually drop aggressively. Mm. That's also a factor that we also look at that uh, that can actually push the yield and, and prices up. But the concern is now this. Could it be the uh, way that um, Central bank want to use to actually lure foreign investors to the market. Yeah, you, you preempted my next you question. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. if that is now the and that's one of the reasons why uh, the market is more like in a situation of doji where uh, you don't know do you buy or you, you sell, sell because right, right. you look at statement from the fiscal policy guy. It sounds as if it's a very good time for you to start buying and loading your portfolio. Right. But when you look at the body language of the monetary policy co co committee guys and uh, the central bank, it tells you that you need to calm down and see and still watch what is happening. And when you look at that it could be that uh, they want to actually continue to actually mop liquidity to keep rates uh, stable at this level and to actually lure foreign investors to the market. So uh, that's cool actually. So it now depends on the risk appetite yeah. for any more. But if you're a portfolio manager, it makes a good sense for you to start loading your portfolio at this level because you might not see as much as this rate. Because if you look at it critically, going to next year, mm. our budget deficit will not be as huge as what we have been seeing in the past. Right. And what that will mean is that we will not see the federal government coming to the market um, as aggressively as they've been as doing before. the part to borrow. Excellent breakdown. Ah, this is uh, Finance 101. All right, more Finance 101. There's Money Africa has these seven items. I want you to quickly, in a few minutes we have left, uh, put your portfolio manager hat on or personal finance hat and give some advice to our viewers uh, for those because we, we get these questions all the time. What do you make of these seven? If you can quickly go through them one by one. Cash and cash equivalents as, as it used to, to manage exchange rate volatility and inflation. What, what do you make of cash? For cash, um, I just think that you only hold the cash that you need now. Yeah. 
uh, because I, I don't expect you to see it on ideal cash at just such a time like this. Even if it's going to yield as low as 4%, it's better than yielding zero. Right. So it's only the cash that you know you need for now that I expect anyone to actually own. Mm. Because the cash you don't need, you can push them into a short data instrument. You know, while I was talking the earlier, I said someone that needs money in fund to a utilize fund in December, you can put it in a four month to maturity bills. And what that would do to you, it still give you a return. And at, at the end of the day, you are still, you will not be, of course, it will not compensate for the huge inflation. Right, right. But one way or the other, it would have still be better than, uh, than just allowing the money to stay idle. All right, what about T-bills, um, money market, mutual funds, and even short-term bonds? Now, if you see T-bills, if you look at the last auction, uh, to be realistic, if you look at the effective yield, it's getting closer to 17%. Right. 17% is not a bad return right. on a one-year instrument. Yeah. So for anybody that you feel that you don't want to risk your capital, you can actually put your funds in treasury bills. Look at a one-year one year, um, maturity instrument. Buy into that. And that, that give you as you, I, as 15, 16, 17% return. That's not and, bad. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you might not get as much as that in the equity market in terms of dividend yield mm. on some of those instruments. So if you know that you cannot play in, in the risky market, you can just put your fund there and you're so sure that your fund is preserved and you get a, a better return on it. Okay, you're the head of fixed income, so I probably shouldn't ask you about stocks. Uh, what about... What, <laughs> I can talk about okay, stocks. Okay, go ahead. You see, you're, 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 you're a well-experienced financial so, market player. So, so yeah. for stock... Um, there are a lot, couple of names in the stock market that you feel that um, they are very sound where you can actually put your money. You have MTN there. You have um, most of those banks. And uh, one thing about banks is that if you look at the, even during the FX crisis, yeah. they are part of those ones enjoying it. Right. Because they are sitting on positive net open position on FX. Right. And at the same time, if interest rate is going up, they are also the one that will enjoy it. Right. Because of the fact that that means their interest income will improve. So there are names in the market like um, GT Bank, Zenith, Access. And one thing about it that we've known for a long time is that they are highly underpriced when you compare to pair in African zone. Right. So it tells you that um, when foreign investors are coming to the market, these are some of the names that they will be target. You have Dangote Cement, you have many credible names. And also, aside that, look at Zenith, that name will give you a very good dividend yield. Nothing less than 12%. Wow. And that's minus capital appreciation that will also come yeah. on the back of that. I remember vividly in April when uh, uh, Access Bank at um, uh, in April, when after, just after they released their result, it was trading 10 naira. And, and as we speak now, our access is close to 17 naira. That's almost like 70% return on mm. an investment. And that is where you can actually beat inflation if right. you're very smart about the equity market. Fantastic. What about, really quickly, uh, pick one, real estate or gold? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Real estate, one thing about real estate is that you should be very sure that it's not a very liquid market. Yeah. So it means that um, it's not a market where you want to put money that you feel that you will need any time and you can quickly fling, fling the asset. So, and that's one of the reasons why you know that money that you need very quick, you can put it in money market or you put it in treasury bills. Mm. But real estate is not a bad investment, but you just know very well that it's a passive investment and it's not very liquid. Uh, so you have to consider that in actually making decision around that. Gold is very good. It preserves your capital and it gives you long-term um, preservation of inf inf inflation uh, impact on yeah. your portfolio and also capital appreciation of gold. In a time of crisis, that is more like the safe haven where everybody runs to. So having a gold as part of the investment or uh, um, uh, portfolio, your investment in your portfolio is not is actually not a bad. bad. So what it means is like, um, like a toolbox. Yeah, where in a toolbox, you just know which one you will use yeah. for certain situations so it's not a bad thing to yeah. have a toolbox that include all these things so it helps you to actually manage your your investment fantastic stuff mr oladipo ajayi head of fixed income chapel hill denim solid personal finance advice for our viewers thank you so much for joining us appreciate your time